What's up team, it's your biggest fan, The Real Casadero, and in this episode we're talking about changing careers team, so let's get to it. So team, this is what I want to consider the first episode of of the uh, daily podcast team, so like a, a show, I get on here daily, maybe we'll write some code, maybe we'll just talk about tech and different things that are going on, we'll talk about different issues, whatever team, but um. But today we're talking about changing careers because somebody on the YouTube channel in the comments, they said, hey, pretty much I'm in the Air Force and I want to change careers. And actually, let's go pull this up to you. So last night and I found myself stuck on the question you asked, that question being, why do I want to learn to code? And they said, hey, look, I'm prior military aircraft maintenance myself and trying to do a career change. Right. So they want to switch careers into software development potentially or web development um do you have any suggestions on figuring this out thanks in advance team so right i you guys you guys know my story well and for those of you who don't i was in the army 14 years got out of the army and i was i've tried to i've, I've done so many different things right there was so i got out and I was going to be a day trader. That was my original plan. So for like, it was like six months prior to me getting out. I, I wrote up a whole trading plan. I had a whole methodology. I studied in, in everything. I did, I did paper trading. I mean, I, I, like, I was on a schedule. I was on a strict diet. Like, I had everything mapped out. And I was learning, 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 learning. And I couldn't wait to get to the real money. And then I got out and I didn't get paid. So like for the first month, we were broke. And we had to borrow money from my mother-in-law. And then the money that I was expecting came in and I went to start day trading and it was the most stressful thing ever, right? Trading paper money was cool, right? And I was doing good. I was, I was averaging about 12, it was about a 12% uh, daily return on my money. When I got to the real money, it was nothing like that team, nothing like that. And then that's when I started to like go deeper into the markets, but I stopped trading. Like I got out of trading and then I was like, well, look, I know code. I understand code. So I'm just going to go to school. I'm using my Montgomery GI Bill and I'll, I'll get a degree in software development and then I'll go get, you know, a software development job. So I went to school and I was in school and I had to take all these extra classes, this math class, English class. Uh, you got to take like a, some, some, like some other, like you get these electives and then you got, you got your main classes, like programming, right? That, that's what I was going to school for. And so I'm going to school and I'm taking all these other classes. I'm going, dude, man. And I was like, cause I had been coding for a long time. So I've been coding for a while already. And so I'm in math class and I'm doing my math and I'm like, dude, like, why am I doing this? I can write a program. And so I would write, I would write programs to do my math homework. And I mean, like, literally, like if I, <laughs> if I had like, if, if there was a list of problems and they were like all the same kind, I would have like a function for each different method. And then I would just link them and I would just have a program. I would just in, put, put in two numbers, whatever two numbers was in my algebra equation. And it would spit out an answer. And I will put that in the block in in because it was all online. So you're doing everything online and be done and go on to the next one. And so this is how I was doing my math homework. I was writing programs to 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 answer to answer my math problems. But you can't do this in class. You can't use this on a test. You can't. And I'm going like this is so stupid. Right. Like why? Why can't any of this stuff be interrelated? Like you have to like memorize all this stuff and Google it is around me everywhere. So anyway, so I'm in school team. And then I got, I'm, I'm going, well, um, unemployment's going to be up. I'm running out of money. I'm going to need a job. And I had a, I had a conversation with my ex-wife and she was like, you just don't know what it's like out here. So I go and I get a job selling cars and now I'm selling cars. And I did that for like two years. I sold 174 cars and month over month, I was able to raise my income up until I, I can't remember how many months I was in, but I started my first month. I made like. I don't know. It wasn't a lot. It wasn't a whole month. It was probably like 1500 bucks. And then next month I made three, 3,000 and then I made 2,500 and then I made a thousand and then I made 3,000 and then I made 4,000 and then five and then six and then seven. Then I got to a month where I made like, it was, it was close to $10,000. It wasn't all the way at $10,000. I got like, it was, it was $8,000 in sales. 
and then you get taxes taken out of that and then i had like another thousand dollars and like i sold like new trucks or something so i got like that money and then you take tax out of that and then i got a commission bump so like from 25 percent and then that that month i sold like eight or nine cars maybe 10 or 11 or something like that and so you so it the more every number over eight we went up like it was like five or ten percent or something so i had a percentage bump so it was like probably like it's like just over nine thousand dollars but after taxes it was like eight thousand eight hundred something but anyway so and then i'm in the reserves and we got to deploy and we got to go to wisconsin and so we go to wisconsin for a month so i don't sell car so i make eight grand go to wisconsin for a month don't make any money so now that money that i made is 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 spent on all of my bills from the from the month that i was gone and i come back and it's a sales job and it's like we left on a friday and i'm selling cars and people buy cars on we on the weekend so i leave on a friday so i miss friday saturday sunday i'm gone for three weeks and then we come back and we have drill like the following weekend so i miss like five weekends of sales and so I can't make any money, man. I come back and it's like I get like my paycheck's a thousand bucks. So now I'm behind and I'm trying to catch up. And the next month, thousand bucks. The next month, thousand bucks. And it was like I couldn't catch up. And then I started to pick things up again. And this is like I started to like market. And I, as soon as I got in the car industry, I started I started building websites and marketing like that I was selling cars. That was like one of the good things that I did. But it didn't bring me a lot of sales. It was just like it didn't bring it. I don't I don't think I got any sales through any of my websites because I wasn't I wasn't SEO in them. And that's another issue with like learning web development is that when I was going out to learn web development, taking all these tutorials, you learn about the H1 tags and how to you know, do all this stuff and react and make all this. cool. But you don't learn anything about SEO. So when you build a website and you put it on the Internet, nobody ever sees it unless you go out and you tell a bunch of people. But if you SEO it and you put content on it, like people will be able to find it. Like, and I could still have those websites like generating money, but I wasn't aware of what I didn't know back then. So anyway, team, so keep going. And then um, I get a job at Microsoft as a DevOps administrator. So now I made it. That's my dream job. I'm there. I'm at the top. Like I did it. I did all the stuff I wanted to do, man. I was in the army. I did all kinds of cool stuff. I'm riding on helicopters, man for freaking I, I in in tanks right i've been to war three times i come back right sold cars right most hated profession in the world did okay and then i'm i'm, I'm working at microsoft right so i'm, I'm just i'm in awe i'm thinking back to, back to my high school days when i first discovered computers and like i booted up and there's that windows screen man and now i'm going to work every day and i'm looking at the same logo and i'm there i'm in the building i got the badge and the badge is my favorite color man it's like so i'm there and so, uh, and so that you would call this like a full on career change. And at the same time, but the, all that stuff is not even significant. The most significant thing is the fact that, um, throughout all of that team that, um, is that, is that I, I had, I started a YouTube channel. So when I was selling cars and it, it this is, this was like after, but before, before, I knew about YouTube and I, I had made like a few YouTube videos, but they were all related to something else. None of them were related to code. And so one day I was like, dude, man, I got to do something. People are on YouTube. They're making videos. And I started making YouTube videos about coding. And I just kept making videos. And then I got this job at Microsoft. And it was like it all happened so weird, man, because. Like I, I've been studying personal development for a very long time. And um, that's why I gave you like this backstory. So you guys could see like it's not all about who you know or what you know. There's a mindset that you have to have if you want to go out here and you want to be successful and you want to get it team. Like you want to completely switch careers and you want to be a success at it. Like you got to have this mindset. And when I when, when I was able to, to, to switch like. When I went into car sales, I had never sold cars before. I just had confidence. I just went in and I was like, hey, look, if, if I make you guys one more dollar than you're paying me, then it makes sense, right? Like, it's, an, you're, it's a good investment. And all I have to do is get better. And every month, right, I make if I make a little more money, then we all get to win. And they were like, dude, nobody's ever said that before. And they hired me, like, the next day. And so that's how I got, after 14 years of not 
working of having to like look for a job or apply for a job anywhere. That's how I got my first job out of the army. I just went into a car dealership and I tell people like, if, if you don't know what, if you don't know what else to do, like you're all out of options and, and you, you're just like, man, like, like you, you're desperate, right? Dude, like find yeah. some way to clean yourself up and just go from dealership to dealership and just ask for an opportunity to sell cars, right? And eventually somebody will give you an opportunity and all you got to do is show up and sell cars. But while you're there, right, you got to pour yourself into it. Like you got to figure out how to get people to the dealership to buy cars. And one way to do it, like, and I tried doing it is with code, but it didn't work quite the way I wanted it to, right? I ended up learning a lot more stuff about web pages and web design and, and all kinds of other stuff. But I wasn't like, it, it was, it, it, it was the, the fact it gave, it gave me something to, to focus on. Right. And then, but, but of course, right. That wasn't my, my, my thing. Like my gift wasn't to come here and sell cars. My gift is speaking, of course. Right. That's why I have the YouTube channel and I speak and I'm making the podcast and I got the code three, six, five startup lab and all, and all this stuff team. It wasn't selling cars like the, but, but it, a part of it was the ability to sit down and talk to people listen to what they're trying to accomplish and be like and, 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 and understand systems and processes to take a person from being completely skeptical of buying a car and the car salespeople and just the whole situation and all of the stigma to actually driving a car home that day. Right. So that that and, and, and figuring out how to overcome that kind of stuff, that was that was the, the lesson in that. But keep going, team. Like there's a bunch of other stuff, right? That I was a, I. I partnered with the guy on a startup and I mean, just, just a bunch of stuff didn't work. Right. So, so the startup didn't work. There was two, two or three startups that, that didn't, that didn't go anywhere. Right. I mean, we did a couple jobs on each of them, but nothing, nothing really ever panned out. It never, they never turned in, in, into any businesses. So I'm, I'm, I'm off and I'm working at, I'm working at Microsoft and I'm doing my thing team. So how, how to make the switch into tech like if you've never done this before right i would say in in my my lucky break came in two ways it was a guy that i knew who was in the military and when i met him he didn't have a job and when he got a job he needed people who were in the he needed people who could get security security clearances so he needed the easiest way to find people with active security clearances or people who just got out of the military or or people who were who were in long enough to like like have a higher level of clearance and so like and if and if you and it and, and, and when i say like recently got out we're talking like within 10 years because the clearance will last like 10 years or something like that so he needed people with clearances and he needed people with tech skills and he knew that i had a clearance and i had tech skills and he knew that i sold cars and he knew that i wanted to get into tech and so when he got the opportunity i was one of the first people he called and i was like yeah and so i ended up going to sell cars I mean, I ended up going to work at Microsoft with him. Um, and then later on, he got fired. And that, that kind of sucked. Um, and then I got fired <laughs> after he got fired. And that, that, that sucked even more because now, like, I, I was broke. Um, but the point, of, the point of the story is is to start with what you know right away. Because c- code, code will come. Like, you'll learn the syntax. You'll learn to build the stuff. But... If, if you're if you're just starting out, if you're switching, that means you're entering a job market and you're competing with people who have already been there for a long time. That's why switching careers is so scary for people, because they don't know what to expect. Like there's other other I mean, and, and you're 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 in competition with people who have more time and experience than you. And so their resumes look like they have all these credentials. So what you got to do is right. You have to. You, you have to play up on the skills that you already have and, 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 and sort of downplay your actual coding skills. So like you're just starting out and you want to go into web development, right? Number one, you have, to, you, have to, you have to get some sort of experience, like some sort of credential, right? So, so and, it, and it doesn't, like some people, they'll go to school and that's cool, right? You have like you go to school, you can go to a boot camp. 
you can take an online course, you can do whatever, right? But the but I believe personally the easiest way to get the credentials is is to is to know what you're aiming for, right? So you know I'm switching careers and I have to play on I have to up play the skills that I already have. The knowledge that's already in my head. So like this person on YouTube they're saying, Hey, like I was a me- I was a mechanic. I think they I think they said they're a mechanic. So I had to go I had to go look it up. It's aircraft maintenance though. Right? So so you're coming out of middle military, you got experience in aircraft maintenance, right? And then I guess the other question is, do you have a security clearance, right? If you it, and if you don't, it probably doesn't matter too much. But what you're looking for now, right, is you're gonna you're gonna look for places and you wanna make a career change. I got it, right? So you don't wanna physically work on aircrafts anymore. But you're gonna look for places and, and this is this is if you have time this is if you have time to look. You're gonna be looking for jobs at at places that would need some sort of person who is mechanically inclined who needs web developers and that's where you would start and so and then and then you would just apply to those places right and and you would apply for any place like that with the entry level web developer position and then also on top of that just apply to any place with the entry level web developer position any any place at all team and then from there right like You've got, you've got companies, companies will come to you, right? If you, if you have on your resume that you have all of this experience and I mean like you really upplay it, like it, it's like you can't, it's one of those things like out here in the civilian world, like cause you're competing with other people, like if your resume is an advertisement, it's just like, um, like a, like an annual report or something like that, right? So your resume is an advertisement. So you want to, you want to not talk about your skills, but what those skills accomplished. So, and then you, and then you want to sort of put it in a way that uh, somebody working at a business would understand, right? And you then got to think about who's going to be reading these resumes, right? So, I mean, if you just assume like middle of the pack, somebody from HR who cares about the success of the business, um, then you want to tailor your resume to sort of fit like how can you contribute to the success of the business so uh, the resume like and then you have you'll have keywords in there like at the top of your resume you'll you'll put like junior web developer skilled in html css and javascript and then you'd have like your github you know um here are some of my projects on and if you don't have a github right then fine just leave that off but you would say like you would have html css and javascript in the top of your resume right D- junior developer skilled in html css javascript and then you might even like put some more words in there to denote like your other skill sets but like not the particular skill but attributes that you have to have to execute those skills so like maybe you have to be extremely organized to be an aircraft mechanic so you can say with with the with the high level of organizational skills or something like that Right. And so now the person who's reading this resume, they're intrigued. They're like, oh, okay, all right. And then they look at your their your resume and they see your jobs. And right. So so they'll look and they'll see like US Air Force, right? And when you get down there, you don't want to be like worked on aircraft all day, every day. Right. You want to write it in a way where they can't really distinguish what you did, but they know that it was done. So it could be like um, you know, maintain the 100 percent operability of you know 750 aircraft on an annual basis um you know resulting in x amount of dollars in savings or 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 whatever with some sort of result you want to put all your bullet points like that and this is hard work and some people are like yo man this that's hard work that's like but if you want to make the switch you have to speak this language that's ridiculous right and and, and you're selling yourself right you got to make yourself sound like a superhero in another aspect because you're weak in code like you can't compete on any sort of experience writing any kind of programs because you haven't wrote any you, you're changing over um so you but you can compete on this other stuff because businesses at the end of the day they only need the software to facilitate the business so if you got a business and they make mechanical products or they fix mechanical products and they have software systems in place and they actually hire people to work on those systems then they're hiring those people solely for the purpose of facilitating the core of the business which is selling that other stuff so when you come in you got to come in as an enthusiast 
about the stuff that they're doing that the business is doing because all the other developers are going to come in just looking for a job they're just going to come in as enthusiasts for the code that they're going to write so you got to come in within it with an enthusiasm for that particular thing and also because you have this knowledge set what a what a lot of people will do is they'll throw away all this previous knowledge they have. They'll be like, I want to change careers, and they'll go off, and they'll go into a completely different arena. So, like, you're a mechanic all this time. You got all this knowledge in your head for being a mechanic, but then, like, you go off and you build websites for, like, I, I, I don't know, uh, 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 f fast food companies or, or, or ad agencies or something like that. When you could really shine in a space where maybe you worked at an ad agency that exclusively did work with companies that are known for, you know, highly mechanically oriented things. So maybe like um, car companies or, or parts suppliers or parts manufacturers or, or companies that sell like kit cars or kit boats or stuff that people have to put together companies that sell engines right there's a company there's got to be a company out there that sells engines like if we go to the internet and go um and go into edge there's got to be a company that sell let's so let's see let's see aircraft air craft aircraft parts so we can go in here right and there's got to be Let's see, look, answers, the Kinsey Aircraft Parts, welcome, Kinsack. So who maintains this website? Who, how does this stuff get here? Like somebody has to put this stuff here, right? So let's, let's go back there and uh, we're going to, we're going to find one. We're going to find a, a company that manufactures aircraft, that manufactures aircraft parts. So look, my pilot store, Japson Pilot Products. So we go here, my pilot store. Who, who? Who somebody maintains this website team? Somebody, somebody somewhere, right? And so, so you're looking, you're looking for companies like this, and then you're looking for companies that do business with companies like this, that build their websites, that build their software, that maintain their stuff, and then like it, you, I mean, you can go deep. You can you can go be a developer at an accounting company. Or a developer that works for a company that subcontracted by accounting companies that do accounting for aviation parts manufacturers or aviation companies or or whatever, right? And so that that's the arena you want to be in. But of course, right? You don't want to restrict yourself and like spend all your time like looking specifically for these types of places. You just want to ever so often go out and make a list. But at the at the same time, right? Like go on all the job sites and just apply for entry level jobs. Just apply for entry level jobs and upplay the skills, the results that you got. And if you and there's people out there that have never gotten results in anything. They feel like they can't say that they got any kind of results. So maybe like maybe let's say, for instance, right, you just graduated from high school and you're working in a grocery store and it's your first job. And you're like, dude, I can't do this. Right. I can't afford to go to school. I can't do whatever. Your situation is crap. And you're just like, I got to get up out of this team. I got to get up out of this. Right. Right. So. There's a couple options, right? You can look at what you're making and you can think about just going off and finding a sales job. Because in a sales job, depending on where you work, right, depending on what state you're in, you're going to get minimum wage, right? They're like they'll, they'll pay you something. And then as you become more successful and you sell more, you make more money. So right there, you're able to take a little bit of control of your time and your effort. But let's say, for instance, right now, but at the same time, right, that's not solely what you want to do. You want to be a developer. You're like, hey, I want to go make some software. All right, team. So you start applying to these jobs, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. If it has HTML, CSS, JavaScript in it, you apply to it. And on your resume, the job you're working at right now, let's say you're working at Safeway team. It's not it's going to be it's going to be Safeway Corporation. Right. That's going to be the company you work for. And what you do, like if you stock the shelves, right, you don't put shelf stocker, you put you put inventory management specialist, right? If you if you manage the store, right, boom, right, you store manager. If you work as a cashier, you can put um, freaking uh, 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 what uh, I don't I don't know. Um, uh, re re responsible, re re responsible for for. Uh, 
I, so I, I don't know. I mean, you did you to make up something, right? You supply chain management, right? Or 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 customer service, right? Customer customer service liaison or something like. I mean, you just got it. And there's creative stuff. You just go on the internet and find some creative stuff, team. But then after that, right? Because people are gonna read this stuff. They're gonna be like, oh man, this person's crazy. You know what I'm saying? But then you back it up with some sort of results, right? Like if you're a cashier and you're there eight hours a day and you see freaking seven hundred people a day. How many transactions is that, right? Responsible for, um, you know, dude, I mean, think about this, right? If, if the average person, if we, if we bring up a calculator, like if, right, right, you're working, you're working eight hours a day and if the average person spends $45 or something like that, right? And you see, and you see, you know, 20 people an hour or something, right? So you look, you, so you're eight hours a day times 20 people an hour. And then those 20 people an hour, they spend an average of 45 bucks. So you multiply that by $45 into, right? And so you're, 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 you, you're handling $7,200 in transactions daily, right? With the error rate of what? When's the last time you got, you got dinged for, for making a mistake, right? Maybe, maybe a hundred transactions ago or something like that. So, right, this is the result. Right. Put that on your resume. And then that's what's on your resume team. And at the top of your resume, it says, hey, junior web developer, you know, seeking more experience in X, Y, Z. And then when you go out to apply, right, you're looking for companies that that build websites and advertisements and do email marketing campaigns for grocery stores team. That's it. And then at the same time, right, you could take it a step further. You can you can build a website for a grocery store. Just go to you go to Safeway.com and build a replica website. Like and I'll tell you, right, like team, so right, we got Safeway dot we got Safeway right here. There's a there's a in Washington, in the Pacific Northwest where I am, we have this company called Tacoma Boys. Tacoma Boys. And let's see if we can find their website. So their website, TacomaBoys.com. They're just a grocery store. Just a, just a grocery store, right? So what you do is if you have experience in that industry, is you and you want to get in and you want to get into web development, you just go out and you just find a local grocery stores. Find some local grocery stores, right? You've you've already applied to your jobs for the day, right? You're 10, you're 20, you're 100. Start at 10. 10 jobs a day, you've already applied to your 10 jobs, saying, hey, look, right, aspiring junior web developer with experience in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, building websites for uh, small to mid-sized grocery stores, or writing back-end code for small to mid-sized, uh, you know, service-based service, service businesses, or whatever, right, that, boom, that goes right at the top, right at the top. And then when, you, when they get to your resume, right, you, all you've ever been is a bus boy or a bus girl, but they don't know that. It doesn't matter, team. They're, they, they, they're thinking about you. How can you make money for their business? They don't care about this other stuff. They don't care, right? You don't have to be the best HTML web developer, nothing. You don't have to have all these credentials that people are asking for. All they care about is whether or not you're going to show up to work and make money and, and, and be a good employee and be a member of the team and not jack stuff up. That's all they care about. So... Use the stuff that you know, team, right? Use the stuff that you know. Right? So you go in and, right, you can go look at this website right here and be like, okay, all right, and just find a local grocery store, build a website that looks like this and make it functional. So when people, when people show up to it and they click on stuff, like all the links work. And then you take it and you deploy it to GitHub. And I got a, I got a video where, like, and, and you can look. You can look on Netlify. You take, you take the website, you build it. Right, you make it all functional with the clicks and, and all the stuff. Make the make the make the make the form work. Set up some sort of little mailing list behind it. Whatever. Make the whole website functional. And the, and you're saying like, Cass, well, what information I gonna put on this website? If you if you look for local grocery stores in your area, I guarantee you can find a website with a crappy gr with a, a a grocery store or some market or something, some business, some business with a crappy with a crappy website, right? But but you your experience is in grocery. But if you have to expand, then expand, right? Let's look for restaurants. What little restaurants here have a crappy website? So you go grab the rest so so you go to the restaurant's crappy website 
and you're just going to take the text from their website and the images that they have and the way that they have them laid out, you're going to use better images and you're going to lay them out better. You're going to make the website look better. So you go find a loser website. So let's, so let's go look, let's go find a restaurant. So I'm going to look for, um, in Washington, there's a bunch of Thai restaurants, Thai rest, uh, you rot. All right. So there's tons of Thai restaurants everywhere. So let's see if we can find a Thai restaurant, uh, with just a straight up website all right so we got so we got this website right here this is this is a decent looking website right so we're going to save this one so we'll take this down or we'll close this and we'll t we'll save this and we'll go back uh ah oh man come on dude all right so what we'll do is this we're gonna we're gonna go down here we're gonna grab this we're going to open a new window all right so now we got that one and now we'll put that here we're going to go back and see if we can find a crappy one. And you know what? The crappy ones are probably going to be way down at the bottom because nobody has ever search engine optimized the website. So let's see. Um, Thai food, Groupon, Nam, Thai cuisine, Alpharetta. And look, I'm getting places all the way in Georgia. So this is on Open Table. Spokane. Okay, so here's Spokane. This is probably a nice restaurant. All right? Look at this website. This website is garbage. This is a garbage website. So you go out, you find a place like this, you look at the stuff that's on here, they got all the text you need, you rebuild it so it looks like this. And then you put it on GitHub and you deploy it using Netlify, and then you, you put it on your portfolio website. You just build a portfolio website for yourself. It's just a website for you. And 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 again, right, it, we don't have to we don't have to be all fancy, man. If we go over to LinkedIn, LinkedIn.com, LinkedIn, official LinkedIn, right? We can go over here and just look at how somebody on LinkedIn has their page laid out or we can build or we can just we can just look for portfolio website examples like I'm trying to get to let's go all right let's here let's do this we'll go LinkedIn dot com forward slash the real Casadero enter oh see I don't even know how to work this LinkedIn stuff I think maybe there's a C that goes behind here I don't know ah whatever it doesn't matter team the point is, is that you build a you build a portfolio website, just a home base on the internet, just like I have therealcasadero.com, which doesn't work right now. So we're gonna go therealcasadero.com. Actually, therealcasadero.netlify, netlify.com. And in the last video, I actually deployed that website, and it's still not working. Therealcasadero.netlify. What's going on here, team? What is going on? Well, so that's something I need to fix. But let's see. Let's see if we can find... Uh, here, look. Portfolio portfolio websites. Right? And there's got to be tons of them out here. There's got to be... There's probably bunches of people with websites just named portfolio website. But we just need an example portfolio website. Portfolio website information here. Create your site in five. Web portfolio. Looking for graphic designers. I don't know, team. But anyway, you build, you build yourself. I can show you this website. We'll just go to Netlify, cause I, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. And this is the same website we built in one of the um, in one of the tutorials. It's the look like supreme. So we'll go netlify.com. Log in. Should let us in. And then right here, the real Casadero, and we'll go right there. And it should take us there, but who knows? All right, so we got a domain settings error. So here, let's check our configurations. Set of Netlify DNS, we'll have it do it for us automatically. All right, already has an owner. Yep, I'm the owner. And we're going to go add. No, we don't need to do that. Learn more about it. Just go OK done and then we have to change all this stuff and it'll tell us when we're verified in our ssl certificate to start working so right now this kind of works not not all the way but anyway team so you just build a little website like this and then you have it linked to all your other stuff right and so like i got this links to the the, the class the store whatever right so you got that site and now you've got this other site that you've gone out and you've built this restaurant website you built it 
and you built it for this other restaurant that had a crappy website. So let's, I, I don't even know where it is right now. Like we closed, I closed it. But so you make, you just build something better and then you put it in your portfolio. And when you apply for jobs, you can say, Hey, right? Like in, under your experience, you can either make it a, a whole different company, your own company. You can say you're doing it for the company you're working at right now. Um, but you'll put like, Hey, built, you know, in designed in t new user interface for such and such and such a restaurant, blah, 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 blah. And now you got some more experience on your resume and then you do it again and then you do it again and you just keep doing it over and over again until you get a job. And each time you learn something new. So if you once you learn the basics, like the like the core HTML core basics, you can build this website from scratch. Right. And then and then once you get to CSS, like so. So when you learn HTML is going to push you into CSS because you need CSS to style the page. But those two things together, you could build this entire website and not only could you build it. You could build it and deploy it and never have to know any kind of programming language. It would look just like this. It would work just like this. It could do all the stuff just like this. And you would never have to use any kind of JavaScript or anything, team. You can deploy it to the Internet. And it'll work in and, and all this stuff you see here, the forms using Netlify, you can make all the forms work. So when people fill out the forms, it goes into a spreadsheet and you can use if then then that to send emails. You can set up a whole system team, right? You can make a completely working website for this restaurant that has a crappy website and now it's done and it's in your portfolio and you're going out and you're applying for jobs and you're telling people about this website now you can go to this company this restaurant that you built this website for because you got all the information on it already and it looks way better than the website they have you can say hey guys i got this website would you like to buy this website from me for x amount of dollars and they'll either go yes or no and if they say yes, then all you have to do is collect the money and go set up the website. And now you can say you're your own business and you build websites. You got the confidence because you did it. You got the know-how and the skill because you learned HTML and CSS and you went and built it and you deployed it to the Internet. Right. And you had somebody actually pay you for the thing. And so now you've got everything you need. You have more qualification than anybody who's ever gone to any kind of school anywhere. You, you're qualified. Somebody gave you money to do this thing. That's that's the sign of a professional. That's it. That's it. When somebody pays you to do something, you're a pro. You're a pro. You become a professional web developer. Somebody paid you before you even had the job, right? And it doesn't always work out like that. You just do it over and over again, and you'll get better. And as your work improves and as your sites get better, right? Eventually, somebody is going to hire you. Eventually, somebody is going to hire you. Now, another thing that I did when I started, when I, when I, what, how I got up into Microsoft, right? And it wasn't all me, right? Like, I had this person who helped me and reached out to me. But I, I strongly believe that it was the mindset that I had that helped me get there. And what I did is I was writing my goals down every day, right? I was like, I am a software developer and successful YouTuber. I am, and that, I was writing it three times a day, right? I live in this, I live in this house in this part of town and all that stuff. And things started to happen, team. And when they started to happen, what I did is I did what everybody does who's, who hasn't escaped a, a small mind, who hasn't escaped the limited thinking. I stopped doing what worked. And then, right, I, I and I, and I stopped, I stopped focusing on the things that I understood while I had this stable job where I was making all of this money and I had pretty much nobody was staring over my shoulder. I could do anything I wanted to do. Right. And I mean, like, it's a it's a it's a it's an automated job. It's a, it's a it's I'm sitting at a desk and I'm a programmer. So some of the stuff that I was doing, I could have definitely wrote code to just do for me or to help me do it. And been and, and still done my job and been stellar at it and been okay, right? My problem was, is that I was I was so enamored at the position that I had and where I was, that I wanted to focus all of my energy on the company. And when they decided they didn't need me anymore, and it wasn't Microsoft who who made the decision, it was the company that I was working for. I was subcontracted, which is what a lot of big companies do. They'll go hire another company. And that company, they'll go out and they'll find the developer. So when you apply for these jobs, you're going to get 
calls from a lot of recruiters. So one thing to do like right up front is just go to recruiting agencies too and say, hey, look, right, I'm an entry level web developer. Find me a job because when they find you a job, they get paid. Right. I got skills um, in mechanical engineering on aircrafts and I'm a web developer. I understand the names and functions and formats and of all the parts and all the pieces. I know how to put them together and take them apart. I want a job where I help somebody put this stuff on the Internet and convey it to other people. Help me find one. And you just go to recruiters. And if you put if you put your resume on LinkedIn and in all these other job boards like Indeed and um there's a bunch of them, man. Usually they'll go job boards for tech people and they'll all pop up. And when you put your resume out there, people will start contacting you. USA Jobs, uh, I think it's top secret jobs or secret security clearance jobs for people who have security clearances or people, anybody who wants to work any kind of job for the government, just go to USA Jobs. You can look around there. The process for getting those jobs is a little harder, but if you're willing to put in, to work, put in the work, they tell you exactly what your resume needs to look like. And so you just format it like that. And then typically what will people say, right? They'll say college education or experience. So wherever it has some college stuff and you don't have the college stuff, you got to dig through your past and find a point where you did something that relates to that experience that they're looking for. And you have to find the end result and then you have to multiply that by 10 times so it sounds better than what it was. And some people are going to be like, yo, Cass, man, you're being dishonest. And team, I'm telling you this, right? Like, nobody cares. When, when a business hires you, they hired you because they need you to help them make more money. And all they're going to care about is if you do that or not. So after you get through the door, the rest is up to you. Either you make it work or you don't. But if you want to get through the door in a field that you've never worked in before, that's what you got to do, team. It's just the way it is, right? Like, when I remember when I went into selling cars, I knew nothing about selling cars, and nobody would tell me anything. It was like, there's there's stuff that I'm figuring out right now, today, two years after I sold. Dude, I worked at, I worked at Microsoft doing DevOps for two years, and there's stuff, I'll wake up in the morning, and I'll be like, oh, wow, this is why that worked that way. I never knew how it worked back then. But so I'm still realizing things, team. And that's just that's just the way it goes. But every every so you're never going to know it all. You're never going to know it all. But you're in a chess game. It's you in the business. The business is looking to get the highest quality of product for the least amount of money. Just like in people. Some people don't like this. They get all up in arms. All oh, businesses just want to take advantage of people and this, that, and the third, right? Like nobody, nobody goes to Safeway or Winco or or McDonald's and 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 acts and acts to pay top dollar for the hamburgers or 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 the clothes or the furniture or anything, right? There's people who do, so I won't say nobody. Those people, they're rich and they got rich because they're thinking the way that I'm talking. But your average person. They're looking for the best deal. So if you're looking for the best deal all the time, why wouldn't a business be looking for the best deal all the time, team? So what you got to do is you got to present them with the best deal, get your foot in the door, and then from there, you run. And how you do that, team, is is you do what I said, your resume, and then you build the sites, and then you put them on GitHub, and you put them online, and you deploy them, and you go out, and you pitch them to other companies, you, bring, you, you set them up so they bring in traffic. And if the other com- if the company that you put the title on doesn't buy the site, fine, fantastic. Go to every Thai restaurant in town. And if none of them buy it, fine, fantastic. If you, get, if you start getting traffic to this restaurant, put advertisements on it. Sell advertisements. And then the, other ab- and then the advertisers in your area, go to, the business that, go to the businesses that advertise. Like when you go and you type in a restaurant at the top, like you get advertised, so I can type T H A I, T H A I, rest, uh, you rot. right? And then you have like there'll be ads at the top, and so you just find a restaurant that's paying for ads, and if no one's paying for ads, then fine. You just it, get as much traffic to the website as you can, and then you can go to these restaurants, and you can say, hey, look, right? I got 
I got, I got, I got freaking X amount of people coming here. And if that doesn't work, then, right, you got this website you built. It's a Thai restaurant website. It's getting traffic. People are coming there, but there's nowhere for them to go buy the food. So you can go out and you can look for people who are going to start Thai restaurants. You can say, hey, look, I got this website. It's already getting traffic. Make your website, make your business this name. I'll sell you the website. And now, and now you got traffic. And, and, and this isn't an overnight thing. Like, you don't just do this overnight. This takes time. This is why I regret I didn't start doing it, doing it a long time ago. But maybe that's the reason I'm able to sit here right now and tell you about this stuff, team. If you want to switch careers, that is how you do it. You got to be sneaky about it, man. You got to go in through the back door. You just can't run up through the front door and try to compete with all these people who've been who've been in the game for a long time. Because I mean, or even like just just their their street cred looks better than yours they may not even have it but their resume just looks nicer right so you gotta you gotta up them you gotta up them team because they got no experience they got knowledge but they got no experience so you gotta say hey look experience is more important than knowledge and then you go out and you apply the experience you have in doing the other stuff along with your knowledge of code and, and you outperform them and you outperform them by by picking a spot where they won't think to look and attempting to dominate that spot. And it's like, dude, like entry level, HTML, CSS, boom, you can build this stuff. And then from there, once you get proficient at it, it's like, yo, let's, how do I get into JavaScript? How do I animate this stuff? How do I build APIs? How do I do page redirects? And every time you learn something new, it goes on your resume. And that new thing you built, you can put on your resume because you built it to enhance the sites that you've already made in the past, team. That is it. I'm your biggest fan, The Real Casadero. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode. If you want to support the channel, check out the Code365StartupLab.com team. I will see you in tomorrow's episode.